yeah yeah hello sir so yes. uh, this is a case of uh, brown hard cataract <coughs> and uh, what i am planning is to use a laureate feco machine mean i think pupil has not dilated fully yet uh, there is some atrophic patch of the iris on this side that's why it has not dilated okay sir maybe some trauma we are not sure पुलिंग जरा बाजूला हे कर फॉर प्रोटेक्टिंग एंडोथिलियम आई एम यूजिंग हियर विस्कोट विस्को प्लीज so now let me see what the capsule like if there is any subluxation or anything uh, let me know if it is not focused is it focused there yes. can you hear me yeah yeah yes it's focused. focused yeah if it is focused yeah okay so for hard cataract i think better to do i would not say very large but uh, don't do small capsular axis so i will target somewhere around 5 mm the capsule is slightly i don't know it's brittle as uh, you expect in some cases is it okay yeah. now i'll be doing hydro but i will be pushing very little fluid here because as i know there is not much space in the bag so i think little bit of fluid here should be enough as a, as you can see here to rotate this uh, nucleus okay so we are ready for the feco i have injected visco uh, viscoat to start with so it is important that i flush out okay uh, it's important to flush out uh, some visco elastic before i start trenching because uh, Uh, viscoat as you know is a uh, highly thermogenic uh, viscoelastic it will not allow the heat to dissipate very quickly so i will just wash off other option is to do soft shell where you inject a visco uh, the hyaluronate below the viscoat so it takes care of the same thing dr saurabh is it a deep socket it's yeah deep socket and uh, ah. What are you I've doing done, under topical or right no i have terrible? blocked this patient because i thought it's he is not so cooperative can you give some tips for the beginners if you are doing under uh, peribulbar uh, uh, like like uh, whether to, whether to, to do, do a, do a massage. massage in such in cases, such cases ideally, ideally not to do, not to do a lot of massage, massage when we do the peribulbar after yes, the block yes i think you are right yeah. because the patient may have weak zonules that's what i think yes. you mean to say yes, yes. So, so that is very important okay okay so, so uh, now if let's focus on, focus on our, our parameters, parameters. i have kept, kept the same parameters, parameters. can you just show please as you can, as you see, can yes, see yes it doesn't, it doesn't budge, budge with these parameters, parameters so i will increase the percentage on to 40% can you see, can you the, see parameters? the parameters yes yes just just look at, look my, at probe. my probe it is, it is going slowly i'm avoiding, I'm avoiding pushing, pushing of the, of the nucleus, nucleus any time yeah 
Yeah. So in, so in these cases, cases particularly when you are using the basic, basic machines, kaka halu naka. You have to be very, very careful and very, and very patient, patient in doing trenching. Give it, give it time. time. Don't, Don't be in a hurry. Okay. So I have rotated it on the other side. Okay. I think, I think the these bubbles, bubbles are occluding the view. I will just remove them. Okay. okay. Now, now, can you see, can you the, see depth? the depth? Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. So, so, do you think, do you think it is adequate or should I trench? trench? Center, you can trench still. Still, yeah. So, I can trench more. Now, I feel it is quite adequate. You can see the color change here. So, for hard cataract, you can rely on the color change. Now, watch how I do it. At the depth, Okay? Clear? Yes. And now I am pushing them apart. Don't leave. You have to crack it completely. Okay. So partially it is cracked. Okay? So this is how it has to be cracked. This moment you have to wait for. Okay? And important thing is I didn't hold it here, but I hold it deep down. If you hold it here, you just keep on, you know, stretching but the posterior plate doesn't crack. So the first crack is over. Visco uh, Gunnar, Cornea. Center. Center. Okay. Now I will move to chopping. Okay, so parameters are again uh, this is a burst mode. Uh, 60 millisecond is off time, 30 millisecond is on, but I think I need more on time. So make it 40. Yeah. Okay. 50 is fine. Okay. So now I'm going to bury it. So I have to See, this, this is almost like 1 to 1.5, that is fine. I'll be burying somewhere here, okay? Not superficially, not too deep, here somewhere. So let me see how the power behaves. Okay. It has buried. Look, at, you can hear the sound also. Okay. So it is a very hard cataract. And uh, there is pulling, and most important thing is this multi-level chop. As I go down, I keep breaking the posterior fibers. Hmm. I think I need uh, more power, so can you increase the on time and increase the off time also? I don't need a lot of, uh, yeah, you increase the off time to 100, yeah, and on time to say 60. Yeah. So let's see how it behaves now. Better? Can you hear better now? Yes. Okay. So it gives me good amount of purchase. So that's the importance of changing your FECO parameters. This is the division till the posterior plate. Okay. Now you leave it. Don't eat it, eat it at this point. Don't. Don't do that. I know you are tempted to do that. But you know, these hard cataracts have a lot of redundancy in the capsule. Again, I'm going for chop, burring, burring, burring. You can hear the sound. And then I crack. I crack till the posterior plate. Are you able to see? Yes, very clear. Again, burry, 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 burry. No hurry. Divide. Divide, divide completely. Okay, so now all pieces are done. I am ready to take out the first, first piece. Kaka haluna.
can you tell me what is the vacuum like vacuum is fluctuating around 200 to 400 okay so the maximum is 400 which i have kept so now i have to analyze whether i need it or i should reduce it if there are fluctuations in the anti chamber which are noted i think you will be the best guide can you see the bubble moving yes okay. it is moving so this is the sign that tells me no the visco is washed off so okay so what i need here is replenishment of the visco and the start filling from the peripheral most part come down here <coughs> then you go with methyl cellulose into the bag push methyl cellulose into the bag and now i want to rotate these pieces so they come you know in front of my tip and uh, what should i do with my tip anyone should i change the tip a bit yes what should i do a smaller tip is safer safer so why now here the most common tendency of uh, beginners is uh, when you take out the pieces you tend to withdraw the your feco probe because you are afraid that posterior capsule may come up with it so i have reduced the tip size i am going in again i i have also changed to a smaller sinski because i don't want a bigger sinski now to maneuver anything all my pieces are already done i am doing b well down now i want the vacuum to be reduced here okay make it 350 please for me can you increase the burst to say 80 seconds 80 milliseconds yes always keep more off time than on time but harder cataracts increase the on time for burst as you can see it becomes more stable to emulsify these pieces when you increase the on time so because i have reduced the vacuum a bit the surgery slows down but it is important because we want to uh, save our posterior capsule here which is expected to be redundant when there was such a big nucleus inside the bag okay so uh, can we reduce it further 300 so take your time okay Chlorate chlorate is, what? So, if you want, if I want to uh, emphasize, I have kept hello na kaka. I have kept the same flow rate because I feel that followability is very important, and it makes your surgery safer. Because if you have low followability, you tend to go towards the pieces which are in the periphery, like this one. okay so what i am doing here is i am just keeping the infusion i am directing the infusion towards the piece so it kind of gets unstuck hoping that it comes up without taking any risk and you can see the posterior capsule is rock steady at these parameters so basically you don't need very high grade equipments or machines to crack and uh, remove the hard cataracts you can even remove harder than these you just need patience and the right technique to do it saurabh it's satish here yes satish uh 
very nice demonstration uh, just wanted to know uh, do you use choppers i don't use choppers okay I, so i mean to say i don't use the sharp choppers because i feel it is unnecessary uh, nucleus is never that hard that you need you know sharp instruments to crack what you really need is the good hold okay means your sinski is doing all the work yes so it's just 1 mm sinski which does it beautifully because i don't think it is the work of the sharp chopper the advantage of sinski as you could see that i could go deep down yes yes till the posterior capsule yes 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 in, in which, such cases hardly any cortex is there yeah so because it's, it's very, very safe so uh, i think using sharp instruments <coughs> has that problem that you sometimes you don't crack the posterior plate <coughs> because you are afraid i think sharp choppers have a role when you are doing vertical chops in hard cataracts so i did vertical chops in all these uh, for mala disat nahi ate itla light la so all were verti vertical chops only uh, 1 mm sensi since ki does a good role and i think it is i would say sharp enough to pierce in nucleus because nucleus is not like a rock though we call it rock hard mm -hmm. you know it is not actually rock these are just just compact organic material which is there okay so the hydrophilic i think has been told multiple times how to inject so i hope and many people say that we should do sics in these cases etc it's right like if you don't have the enough skills you should always do whatever the best you can but remember these patients also demand multifocal toric iols it is not so and not necessary that uh, hard cataract uh, the patient's vision is very less you can, you know that older patient with nuclear sclerosis hard patient may still have 6 9 6 12 vision and they will come for you know premium iols so if you use the right technique in all your cases you can definitely use the same in hard cataract just the difference is patience little bit of change in the technique uh, i must congratulate sir for this excellent demonstration and our 3d view is I feel much much better than what you may be seeing. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you sir. So this particular iris still remains like that so I I think it was some kind of trauma or atrophy I don't know. This is what Dr. Nidhi was telling about the outer incision hydration never do inner. So next case will be done by Dr. Priyanka. She is our senior fellow, and uh, she will be doing the surgery. Meanwhile, uh, I think uh, our first batch will go for the wet lab demonstration. And in the wet lab, I would like to tell you that it's not the human eye. So what we want you to, you know, feel is the how to do various maneuvers like. trench divide and chopping what should be your you know basics so we'll focus on that so thank you so much thank you very much and uh, i would just like to show the power used in this particular case that uh, i think as it showed the total case time was 15 minutes i used 1 minute 7 second is that right and uh, average i think it was 26% uh, so it So it it is around say 15 to 16, 15 to 20 seconds yes. of peco which was used, and I use a good viscoelastic agent which I replenished in between. I didn't allow any peco piece to touch the endothelium. I divided all pieces in the bag first, and then I started taking them out. I reduced my parameters as I go on eating the pieces. So I take that redundant capsule out of the equation. 
So that's how you do it for hard, very hard black or brown cataract with whatever machine you have. So Rav, uh, what is your uh, uh, choice? Direct chop or stop and chop? Uh, stop and chop works in all cases. Direct chop works with experienced hands. And uh, of course, any chop is good. But I think direct chop requires experienced hands because you know how to, you know, put pressure at that particular point. It is like, just like karate, you know. Okay. For karate, you should know where to hit for breaking the brick. So for that, you need more experience. So for beginners, I would say start with trench divide, then stop and chop. And then if you wish, you can go ahead with a primary chop in selected cases and then you can do it in all cases. Another uh, important thing is which machine you are using that also makes a difference because for example, I'm used to Ozil machine okay. and Ozil <clears throat> is brilliant in uh, trench divide and stop and uh, I would say trench divide. And if I'm using a longitudinal machine, I might have, uh, you know, I might be using primary chop or stop and chop, chop. more because these uh, longitudinal machines are better in, you know, uh, chopping because if you see Ozil, it uh, vibrates sideways also. Yes, so, stop, stop, yes. so whenever it makes a hole in the nucleus, it makes a hole which is larger than its bore size. So obviously you cannot get the same kind of grip. But if you have a longitudinal machine, it creates a bore equivalent to its uh, bore, uh, you know, tip, tip size. size. Mm. So you can immediately get the, uh, you know, good grip. Also, the Alcon uses 45 degree tips, uh, while uh, some other machines or some other companies may have 30 degree tips. Again, with <coughs> 30 degree tips, trenching is difficult, but chopping is easier. So it depends on the hardware also which you use. Yes, yes. So, Rob? Uh, I have a query regarding this on time and off time setting that you were showing. Yes, sir. So in the on time, suppose you have kept uh, uh, 60 uh, millisecond and off time is 100 millisecond. As you were pressing the foot pedal, the on time was remaining the same, but the off time was changing up to 1000. Could yes. you elaborate on that? Yeah, so uh, basically that is how, uh, can you uh, show on the screen please? So that is how the burst works. So you can see, in most of the machines have these, of course they may have different names. So in burst what happens, when you start pressing the foot switch, your uh, FECO starts coming off with whatever on time you have fixed. For example, here suppose 170 has been put or say uh, I have kept 80 as the on time. So the burst will start coming at 80 milliseconds. So the burst width will be 80 milliseconds. and the off time you have to decide and it is very important i will just elaborate on that off time should be always more than the on time why because it gives enough time for the tissue to relax so whatever energy is being delivered to the tissues I, by tissues i mean the cornea or the stromal or stroma around the your incision has to be dissipated before the next pulse, pulse or burst comes so that's why it should have enough relaxation time now this is the minimum of time you can get. So when you press the foot switch, can you uh, bring down the foot switch please? So when you start pressing, it starts off somewhere around 20, 96 milliseconds. So that's the standard. So when you press it once, it starts off with 20, 20 2000 milliseconds. Okay, somewhere around that. And when you press it fully, it reaches 100 milliseconds. Okay. So when you press fully, then also it doesn't become continuous, but it becomes 80 millisecond on time and 100 millisecond off time. So while chopping, this is this is very useful because you just need one burst to bury, and then you want to go to the vacuum mode rather than going to continuous mode. That is advanced. Now I will also elaborate on the pulse mode, which is very useful for beginners for using for trenching. So I. This is the continuous mode which is common, but I don't recommend this to be used at least with uh, Alcon machines because with harder cataracts you may have corneal burns or wound burn with continuous mode because you don't have that control over the foot switch. So you go to the pulse, you keep the power high. So whenever instead of continuous, like in continuous if I am keeping 60 power, you increase the power by almost 30%. So 90 to 100% power should be used in pulse. Use uh, use high pulse rates, so its effect is like continuous power 
and this is very important what is the percentage time on again if you go above 50% your thermal relaxation time is less than the time when feco is delivered so that is the area when you may have corneal burns or uh, wound burns so if you keep the uh, percentage on less than 50% i typically keep as you show i show, uh, saw you show you uh, show you that 30% is my typical but for harder grades i go on increasing till 45% but 45% is the maximum that i go on and uh, minimum for soft cataract i go to 30% so that is the effect that uh, hyperpulse on uh, percentage on is uh, having on the cataract so i think you can proceed you so continue i am talking so all these parameters or what you showed are available with other machines as well this Barbitration and combinations. I think most machines have this, maybe having slightly different names. So once you ask the uh, maybe engineer, he will tell you what uh, all settings they have. I think uh, the hyperpulse mode and burst mode is now there in all machines. Uh, previously, all machine used to have pulse, which was like 50% on and 50% off. With hyperpulse, you can have additional changing on time, which is the advantage of hyperpulse. Yeah, I hope that answers the yeah, question. Thank you. Is thank you, Saurabh. Yeah. Thank you very much. And also, as I shown in the, uh, during the surgery, we have to work on the other parameters which are very important, like the flow rate, or here what is written as aspiration rate. This is very important for peristaltic machines. I always uh, try to use the highest flow rate possible with anterior chamber stability. That is very important. If you keep the flow rate too high, the anterior chamber will be a little unstable. But if it, you keep it too low, what will happen? Everything will happen slowly. But apart from that, you have to go, you, you, you have to bring your FECO tip towards the pieces, which are more risky. So keep flow rate high enough so that the anterior chamber is, you know, stable. The speed of the surgery is enough for you to manage because every surgeon will have his own reflex time. Also, don't keep it too high because what I have seen is that it creates lots of lot of turbulence inside the anterior chamber. So it may itself damage the endothelium. So avoid keeping it too high. And for vacuum, as I think uh, all of you must have seen it uh, very clearly that vacuum is the parameter which I was changing during the surgery, looking at the fluctuation in the anterior chamber. So I think one fine thing which uh, you know all of us should learn, uh, each eye is slightly different. So even if you have set parameters, it works for 90% of your cases. But you know, five to 10% cases, you should be you know uh, attentive enough to pick pick up the details, pick up the changes in the fluctuation, and then change your parameters accordingly. Yes. Next case, Dr. Priyanka is starting. I think uh, you have the goggles. Goggles, then. Starting wet lab session. Dr. Lauti sir is there? Yes, sir. I'm here. Yeah, so the first batch is ready to come for the wet lab? Yes, yes. I'll, I'll just request them yeah. to go. Yeah. Okay, so the next case uh, Dr. Priyanka is going to do is. All the six candidates, please come at the reception yeah. table. Posterior subcapsular. Can you switch off the tube light? Oh, good. So Priyanka is going to use Infinity, which has Ozil. So she will be doing CCC from the side port incision, which she is making first. So you start in the first session, the station later. So she has made two side port incisions. While making side port incision, it is important that you make it in a way that it is very easy for you to maneuver through these incisions. Many times I have seen that, you know, beginners, so while making the side port, they are very awkward in their hand position. So if you are awkward to start with, if your hand position is at an awkward angle, I think you are going to have trouble in maneuvering through these incisions. So make at a place where it is easily, you know, maneuverable for you. So she is demonstrating how the uniplanar entry is made. 
she has done very well so it starts from the uh, no foldable it starts from the uh, limbus as you can see there is little bit of bleeding which is there so now regarding staining now as you can see there is uh, such a good glow that you may not need uh, to stain the capsule in all cases and uh, thanks to dr kakriya uh, if he is here i think uh, he has developed a device called omniglow and which can give i think uh, dr salim sir you have this device with you can somebody give mic to dr hello yes. yeah yeah uh, i think you are using that device yes, yes, how actually, is your experience actually uh, can i take few minutes uh, sure 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 actually i was operating under a normal microscope so most of us were doing that and i happened to operate under lumira i where i was giving such kind of a good glow with a very good stereo axial illumination and depth perception then i came across this omni glow and after uh, uh, using this omni glow the need of other higher end microscope has uh, has no role i guess super uh, so, so i think really that's fantastic what tool. makes high end microscope a high end microscope that is excellent glow irrespective of the pupil size which is very important and i feel this uh, improves your stereopsis also your depth perception as you can see here i am using this leica microscope which has uh, similar function stereo coaxial illumination and uh, it gives you quite good depth and similar lumira i is there which has similar function and i think these microscopes are very important for particularly for training because you need to understand the tissue very well when you are training so you need to have excellent visualization of the anterior chamber and for me understanding feco is all about you know understanding the physics of the nucleus understanding the physics understanding the depth that is all about what you uh, do in feco and for that i think this glow is very very useful so i think uh, omni glow is a great device i will also try it on my visu 200 later uh, so visu 200 uh, another great microscope but the glow which these microscopes give are just unparalleled So beautiful CCC is done. You can see. Doctor Sarov, he is operating under Omni Glow. No, this is Leica M822. So it has inbuilt stereo coaxial illumination. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. You can make it out by seeing those two lights. I think Omni Glow has something different than these two lights. Kind of joined lights are there, which I saw in your videos itself. So one pole has prolapsed. I think it is important. If one pole prolapses out. Uh, we have to decide what to do because if it is too soft, I will just let it remain prolapsed and do FACO aspiration. But if it is grade one or more, I think it is better that you push it back in the bag because uh, doing chopping in the vertical position is not easy for the beginners. 